Welcome back to the Cinematic Flight Report. Today's video will cover part 1 of my journey with Etihad Airways in their Dreamliners business class from Amsterdam to Phuket via Abu Dhabi. The flight will leave Amsterdam at 2.40pm and arrive in the UAE just after 11pm with a scheduled block time of 6 hours and 30 minutes. Enjoy! Summer in Amsterdam, a rarity in itself. Arriving to several days of Indian summer with temperatures in the high 20s like in mid-September of 2021 was just very lucky timing. My family and I spent the first days on vacation together since the pandemic hit and I took them to my favorite hotel for the occasion, Amsterdam's own Wall of Astoria. A place embracing love for detail to the utmost, may it be with their bee seasonal own honey sweets at check-in that should all fragrance master that fills your room with a charming scent, or the many other debonair services they provide, thinking two steps ahead and ready with a surprise when you least expect it. Hi. A unique place in the heart of Amsterdam, doing justice to its heritage by bridging a connection from the Dutch golden days of trade to modern contemporary luxury. Located in World Heritage Herengracht, the Gentleman's Canal, the property expands over six historic canal houses, each with its own protected structural conditions, meaning that every one of the 93 rooms in Swedes had to be tailor-made from the ground up. The city is yours once you step out of the hotel. And from here, we took a private canal cruise and got to enjoy Amsterdam from an entirely different perspective. Cruising the canals in the golden afternoon sun cast its spell on all of us and the four-hour dinner cruise went away faster than I could believe. Only a day later, what had been golden and sunny went back to a regular autumn day in the city of Amsterdam. Yet with those beautiful moments of the past days in mind, these days quickly became one of our favorite memories of recent years and a strong reminder that time spent together with your loved ones is incredibly precious before it one day runs out. Being the last day in Amsterdam, it was also time for the mandatory COVID test. Much to my surprise, the Dutch government generously offered complimentary tests to everyone, even covering tourists that just needed it to travel, rather than as a medical necessity. With a quick turnaround of fewer than 24 hours, I was able to use one of the most clever travel innovations that emerged during the pandemic, Etihad's verified to fly service. Thailand had just lifted its travel ban and allowed entry under their Phuket Sandbox program but that came with a lot of requirements. Proof of vaccinations including QR codes, a certificate of entry issued by the Thai embassy at your country of departure, insurance covering a minimum of 100,000 US dollars specifically for COVID expenses, and of course, a negative RT-PCR test within 48 hours of departure, as well as prepaid arrival tests. Having to produce all of these documents at the check-in counter, and again during transit, guarantees endless wait times, as well as probably a lot of stress and anxiety. But with just a few clicks, I was able to upload all files and was cleared for travel within hours, leaving me with a peace of mind and letting me enjoy the final night in Amsterdam's largest private garden. All set for a seamless departure out of Schiphol. The next day was the 16th of September, one day before I turned 27. Yet the hotel didn't let this one slip and delivered a pre-birthday cake alongside the ordered room service breakfast. The food quality and presentations are outstanding, even when you desire something not listed on the menu. And the ex-royale second to none, hitting the perfect yoke every time, 
my absolute favourite throughout the years. It's always a pleasure staying at the Wall of Astoria Amsterdam and I can't wait to return for another stay. It was time to leave the hotel around 11.30 and get to the airport. A drive from Amsterdam city centre to Schiphol takes around 25 minutes, so even with bags to check, there would be lots of time left. I even made an extra stop and left my car at the Holiday Inn Express, which offered a great deal on parking and continued on from there in a pre-booked transfer, thereby eliminating any last-minute stress and long walks to the departure hall. With 100 plus airlines flying out of Schiphol to more than 330 direct destinations, the Dutch airport ranks among the EU's top three, with more than 20 million passengers in slow 2020. That's still far away from the 71 million in 2019, but with travel picking up, it won't be long until passenger numbers reach new heights. Today's Etihad flight will depart from Terminal 3 at 2.40 pm. About two hours prior to the flight's departure time, the check-in was not full at all, and remarkably, no further documents were required at the desk, as Etihad's verified to fly system worked perfectly. A lot of airlines struggled with this procedure, especially with connecting flights to all over the world. Amsterdam, of course, is KLM country by heart, covering the tarmac in its signature blue livery, paying homage to the airline's more than 100-year history. Etihad also is no stranger to Amsterdam and has been coming here since May 2013. Their Dreamliner represents the workers of the fleet as they try to keep them in the air for at least 16 hours a day. It also features the same business class product you'll find on the now grounded A380s with up to 32 seats depending on the aircraft's version. And just as ground staff prepare to give the aircraft its mandatory cleaning, cabin crew also made their way to gate G8 in order to prepare the Boeing for departure. Knowing my way around Schiphol, I didn't visit the lounge and rather stayed by the windows and watched the scenery on the tarmac. It was one of the busiest airports I've been to since Covid hit and I felt great to see so many planes in action. With about 10 minutes to boarding, I also made my way to the left of the airport, thereby getting a second look at many of the flying Dutchmen getting ready for taxiing. I also saw an airline I thought I might not see again, Cathay Pacific. With a beautiful A350, getting prepared for its flight to heavily restricted Hong Kong. At the end of the G-Wing, just after the sad and somehow pointless fish tank, Etihad 787-10 was parked and still in the process of cargo loading. Being one of KLM's co-chair partners, passengers flying from Amsterdam have many choices when traveling to the Middle East or Asia. Etihad by no means is the only one, as Qatar and Emirates are two more airlines vying for the favor of travelers. Saudi's daily service makes it four, thereby making it hard for KLM to compete, who while offering shorter direct flights, do have an inferior hard and soft product. In the meantime, Etihad flight number 78 was finally ready for boarding. I have to admit that Etihad always had a special place in my heart, as it was one of the first airlines I ever flew in business class, back in the old days of the pearl seats on the A330s. That's why flying Etihad always feels like coming home. Today's 787 had a total of 32 premium seats and a one-to-one -one configuration. Window seats A and K, as well as the honeymoon seats E and F face forward, while all seats open to the aisle face backward. A and K definitely are the most private seats on the plane, as a black ledge shields passengers away from the aisle, yet when you're flying backward, you may close an additional sliding ledge to enhance your privacy. The golden brown color palette makes the cabin feel warm and welcoming, reasoning well with Etihad's brand identity. Personally, I was happy to choose 12K at the very end of the cabin. Once sitting down, the crew immediately welcomed me by name and offered me a welcome drink. I chose both a glass of orange juice as well as Pieper Heidsieck champagne, and I was happy to find out that the surf juice actually turned out to be freshly squeezed. As you can see, the K seats offer a generous pitch, and behind the wrapped blanket and pillow lies a spacious footrest. 
Additionally, Etihad also did not cut the amenity kit, which was given out together with a COVID-related wellness kit. I quickly checked with the crew regarding filming on board and then settled in for the six-hour flight to Abu Dhabi. Heitzig Champagne has been with Etihad for years and the Surf Glass made a proper welcome for a business class product. Etihad is one of the carriers that offers a dine anytime option and for that, crew members circled through the cabin before takeoff to already note down passengers' f and preferences. On today's flight, Etihad would serve an early dinner with a choice of four main courses as well as a second service just before landing. And if you've been flying with Etihad throughout the pandemic and this menu looks familiar to you, that's probably because it is. Over the past months, Etihad has streamlined its food options to Abu Dhabi and therefore offered less variety while trying to keep up food quality. The Brut Champagne and Bellini cocktail are completed by two red and white wines each, as well as a well-selected Sotan and vintage port, together with Etihad's regular soft and alcoholic beverage selection. Since you've flown with us, is there something you haven't tried from this? Yes, it's the beef, because I'm always... Uh... Okay. Give you the beef, absolutely. Will it work? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I trust you. The chicken is actually delicious. The paprika That's chicken okay. is, is, is amazing. But I'll take the beef. Let's do the beef and see if it doesn't work out today. Then we, then <laughs> okay. we, know, then we know we go back to the chicken. Okay, <laughs> amazing. After successfully convincing me to give the filet of beef a try, I was courteously offered a refill on the champagne, which promptly arrived. Moments later, we started taxiing towards the runway and were ready to leave Amsterdam with a little delay, most likely from loading all of that cargo. And as soon as I got the hang of the somewhat unfamiliar three-point safety harness, we were bound for Abu Dhabi and about to take off into a now mostly sunny sky. Moments after takeoff, the crew immediately returned with the pre ordered drinks and served me another glass of the Pieper Heizig Champagne, alongside that classic assortment of warm nuts. They also went ahead and dimmed the Dreamliner's window blinds, thereby creating the typical blue hue shining into the cabin. Within minutes, also my table was prepared for dinner, and I leaned back and waited for my food to be served. In addition to their PCR test requirement for every passenger, Etihad had also modified the onboard service. In order to minimize contact between guests and crew, Etihad would serve all three courses together on one tray, including bread and butter, as well as your pre-ordered drinks. Yet to make the concept work space-wise, the first course of Meze is downgraded to an all-in-one cup serving, similar to the dessert. 
Nonetheless, the fruit presentation simply looked stunning and had lost none of its former finesse. To accompany the beef tenderloin, I chose a glass of the Bordeaux Red alongside a glass of still water. The main course was plated to order, just as it would have been doing regular service, and looked beautiful. Without further ado, I started with the hot dish, as I didn't want it to get cold, and also was keen on knowing how Etihad would counter the challenge of heating steak in the air. To be honest, my expression says it all. A perfect medium, on the spot. This is what you're hoping for when cutting into a steak on board. Also the taste, juicy, tender and delicious, maybe the best steak I ever had on a plane. A dish as good as can be, and also the sides were just right. As for the wine, the Cuvée from Magot was simple and tasty. Its rather full body worked great with a juicy steak. When the crew passed by for the two-bite check bag, I happily shared my excitement for the dish, as it really is out of the ordinary to first of all have a catering concept in place that allows for these results, and also to take so much care in meal preparation. Speaking of care, since I praised the paprika chicken before takeoff, the crew had kept it ready as well just in case, and I happily agreed to have it as a second main. The dish looked just as good as I remembered it, and with the jus and mash, the arranged flavours usually just work. Just as when cooking the beef, the key is to not overdo the chicken, as it otherwise gets terribly dry real quick. Yet just as they did with the first course, the crew went two for two, and also nailed this one, leaving me with nothing else to say, and just enjoy the dish. That kind of consistency is something other airlines can only dream of, and it feels great to be able to order a dish without second thoughts. And with four mains on the menu, most guests will be able to find their favorite. Last but not least, I dug into the classic Mezzi before putting wine and dessert to the side and returning my tray back to the crew. Don't get me wrong, I also miss the tableside wine tasting or a choice on the starter. Yet I think that the compromise Etihad has established works. Get I always may get me a beautifully plated first course, but then serve a main that was pre-arranged as one plate on the ground, getting nowhere near today's result. Nothing is perfect, and that's okay. Etihad certainly didn't cut back on quality, and their approach will work for most guests. For dessert, I ordered both cookies and a mug of black coffee, as well as the rich cake of chocolate mousse are saved from the tray. Also here, no complaints. Overall, this is what dinner service in business class should look like. Great food and a well-selected menu of wines and spirits. The Chateau d'Ozac, though clearly an entry-level wine of an estate capable of producing a Grand Cru Classé, is an appropriate choice for the setting. The only thing I would have enjoyed after a meal like this would have been a cheese plate, but I can get past that. Yet what I didn't have to miss out on was a dessert wine. Here, Etihad put two nice choices on the menu. A 2009 Sauterne, well rated at 94 Parker points, as well as a 2002 Vintage Port. It's funny how a simple swirl of the glass sets free so much aroma that you can smell the port wine from the entirety of your seat. And you can really see its thick texture on the side walls of the glass as it sticks to it and slowly sinks back down. Port wine, with its rich and sweet flavor, remains to be one of my favorite choices, and this one was no exception.
As the day turned to night, I decided to take care of some work before getting some rest and logged onto Etihad's Wi-Fi system. You get several connecting choices, which in my view are fairly priced depending on your needs. I really like the 24 hour package since it would allow me to also stay online during my connecting flight to Phuket. Coverage was good and it was fast enough for Google flights and simple websites, streaming anyways out of reach due to the data cap. And as cabin lights got dimmed down for the night, I also got ready for some rest and turned towards the amenity kit. The Aqua de Palma branded pouch had a sleeping and dental package inside, including earplugs as well as some hand cream and perfume. To make yourself more comfortable, you have a pillow and blanket at your seat packed inside the plastic wrapper. The thick high quality blanket has two sides to it, one with a cooling fabric and the stitched elements and the other with a plush fleece coating that is extra warm. The seat smoothly detracts into a flatbed at the touch of a button and can be adjusted to any position in between. Once fully flat, the bed will allow for 195 centimeters of lying surface, which is enough for me to rest comfortably. Yet if you're taller than 6'4", then this seat will definitely force you into a somewhat angled position. One hour later, I woke up just in time for the second meal service. I could have tried any other main course such as the pasta, yet I was in the mood for one of Etihad's all-time classics, their steak sandwich served together with a bag of chips, as well as a Cipriani Bellini. The drink, though pre-mixed, was a welcome variety, and the steak would make a good end to this flight's meal service. The steak sandwich has been a flyer's favorite forever, and even though back in the day it featured additional turkey rashers and bone marrow, its current form is still lovely. My approach here was similar to a burger. Once you pick it up, you better not set it down until you finish it, otherwise you'll make a mess. And today, it was just as good as I remembered. With the orange mood lights turning back on, it was a clear indicator that we'd now leave cruising altitude and were about to get ready for the descent into Abu Dhabi. Our initial delay had almost disappeared and we were on track to land only eight minutes behind schedule. So looking back at this flight, I must say that for me personally, Etihad has done a lot of things right. The straightforward document check made my life a lot easier and was since then adopted by more and more airlines. The onboard experience was as good as ever, the implemented so-called wellness measures didn't make it less enjoyable for me. After all, Etihad still felt like home, and today that surely was because of the crew and their personal forthcoming service. It was obvious that they enjoyed being a host and making your experience as a guest as good as can be, and that's what good hospitality is all about. Why Etihad only receives a 4-star Skytrax rating is beyond me, while airlines like Lufthansa score 5 with inferior F&B and all seats without direct aisle access for every passenger. Not everything makes sense, yet Etihad's performance today absolutely did. Once landed in Abu Dhabi, the humid air on the cold aircraft immediately made the windows fog up and that gives you the certainty that you indeed are in the United Arab Emirates. 
From here, I had about 45 minutes before my flight to Phuket was scheduled to board, and that is a typical example of how well these nightly connections are timed when traveling through the UAE. Navigating Abu Dhabi airport is fairly easy, and before reaching my departure gate, I made a quick stop at their business class lounge until right about midnight. And that's it for today's episode. See you in part two. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care, and bye-bye. Come on.